Right, well, I've been working with Garth today. We've, we've done a lap of the Hampshire we've been, haven't we, Garth? Yeah, Yateley and Sandhurst and around that area. Been to a few shops, yeah. taking a few orders is what we're, what we're paid to do, but I'm working even further up north tomorrow, so rather than drive all the way home, I'm doing a quick overnight with my old mate. Me and Garth haven't fished together for a while, have we? It's a long time now, it's probably the BCAC semi, it's probably the last time. About five years ago, which ain't good enough, so we're putting it right tonight. We're on Oxley's on the linear complex. We've had a good walk around, there's quite a few people, as, as you'd expect from such a popular day ticket fishery. But we've actually managed to find, what, ten carp did we see? We saw ten, about ten in the edge, but we've seen a few shows since, haven't we? So. Yeah, but literally we're talking right under our feet, yeah. so before we do anything, we're going to go down to the swim, we're just going to fish one rod each, we're literally going to lower them under our tips, and while we're doing everything else at the back of the swim, we're just going to see if we can nick a very, very quick bite. Yeah. It's really important, if you see a chance, we've only got the night, that might be the only chance we get, and whilst it's there, we've got to try and make the most of it now. It's six o'clock now as well, so whilst we have a rod out, we'll get those out as well, get everything else set up at the back of the swim so that we can get our rods set for the night before it goes dark. There you go, we'll see you in a bit. Slight change of plan for me, mate. I sort of I spoke to a few people before we got here and had this great plan of finding a spot at about 90 yards range, three rods on it, and sort of you know spot in and three rods nice and tight. But yeah. obviously we've already spoke about the fish we've seen in close, but there are so many in close. There's loads. I mean, we've I both got a zig out, haven't we? We get yeah. liners all the time on them. It just you know it's a typical mistake that you most, but you, you come with you have to have a little plan in mind when you've yeah. got such a short spell, but. There's nothing wrong with someone's had a bite then. Someone has got a bite is next to us. Um, but yeah, because, you know, sometimes you have to change plan, don't you? I'm struggling to look back. The fish are showing kind of yeah. two, three rod lengths out. I don't want to fish under my tips all night long. I've got a feeling they're going to push back a little bit. So my, my sort of my plan at the moment is to fish one on the deck in quite close, or maybe even leave a short zig in close. Yeah. Maybe a better bait out at not too far, literally maybe 40 yards. I just think they're going to move out a little bit. I think I'm going to fish mine at the bottom. This there's a shelf that like, drops off here. Yeah. Well, right in front of me down there, it goes down kind of seven, eight, nine before it drops away to this kind of 10 foot. So I think it's quite nice there and it comes back into a bit of onion weed this side. So I think I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to drop well, it. That's, well, that's a plan, mate, because what we could do, we, you know, we've got five rods between us. Absolutely, yeah. I'm um, fishing two, aren't I? So. I'm here to catch a carp and so are you. So whichever one of us catches first off, whichever yeah, method, we can for. soon change around, Absolutely, can't we? Yeah. Um, right, well, I want to try and find something. I mean, if I'm honest, it feels pretty barren. You've got a bit of gravel, a bit, bit of silt. Yeah, silt, same out there. It's not like weed out there. No. The only weed I found is close, like the only weed. Yeah. Place. You go out, it's 11 and a half, 12. Foot, yeah. Like you say, a bit of gravel. And again, with that sort of depth, where we're seeing them, like literally under the surface, as we said, we think they're attacking the mayfly. I'm probably going to find the, the back of a bit of gravel just into the silt. Yeah. No, not to put loads out, maybe 10 spots yeah, of bait. You know, a dozen spots. Right? Yeah. No, just keep it. In fact, and... lucky 11s. It's all about lucky no, 11s. You've got to do multiples of seven. No way. <laughs> right, well, anyway, we've yeah, talked enough rubbish. Yeah, I'm going to find a spot now. See you in a bit, mate. I'd ask you to get the kettle on, but you've got the milk. Cheers. Pretty much all my fishing in the last eight or nine years has been overnight as having a wife and now a young. A young boy, I kind of you've got to try and balance your life and your fishing and your work. So, overnighters is a way for doing of doing that for me. I can do one or two overnighters in the week, and still have the weekends with the wife and, and my son. When you do get a bite and you've got to go to work the next day, it's hard. But um, the feeling you get, the satisfaction is incredible. You know, you you sl slotting your fishing in around other, other things in your life, and especially when you catch a, a whacker, you know, or a fish you've been after for a while. Um, yeah, feeding is incredible. I caught a fish a few years ago, one I've been after for two or three years. Um, it was over 42 pounds, and the next day I had my longest drive. It was 120 miles down to Weymouth, um, and on the way back I was I was hanging. But just that thought of that fish just kept me going all the way through the day. You know, organisation is a key. You've got to have everything ready. So in the morning before you go, you've got to be able to pick your gear up throw it in your car and go. You've got to have you know, your bait out, prepared, whatever, you, whatever it is you need. If you can, rigs tied, things like that, because it just makes everything so much quicker and more efficient when you get there. If you're fishing a lake where you can get something going, like putting a, bit, a little bit of bait 
and you know your spots you're fishing to, it's even better because you know you can have your, your, your spots marked or wrapped or um, marks on your, on your line and you're literally ready to go. Bonk, bonk, bit of bait and you're away. That way I think you're kind of maximising the chance of getting a bite. Well, the trip can be summed up in one word, uneventful. Pretty much nothing's <laughs> happened, does it? Nothing, I don't think anything on the lake's happened, does it? No, mate, it's been absolutely dead. I've not, I was up for a bit in the night. We stayed up till gone 11. We've gone 11, half 11. Half um, 11 yeah. We had the guy next door, we had him have a couple of occurrences. Just wondering if we should have stuck to the initial plan and actually going out a bit further, but you, sometimes when you've only got a night, you can only fish you know, what you see. And we saw the fish in close, felt we had to... Of, there was yeah. a lot of fish there. I mean, the, they were definitely feeding on, feeding on the mayfly hatch, weren't they? A hundred percent, yeah, so like trout. I had a couple of couple of liners, like between three and four o'clock, there was quite a bit of activity and there was, there was still some fishing close and it would, you know, sort of sit there for a bit, thinking it's still going to happen. Unfortunately, it wasn't the bay. As you can see, as I mentioned before, when I was fishing with Bailey, everything's packed away. The last thing to be done is just the rods. So, you never know. I'll be back on film in a minute to show you one, but I think it's too late now. Yeah, probably. It's quarter to eight and we're going to work. Yeah, exactly. Always next time though, mate, isn't there? Yeah. Nice one, thanks for watching.